everybody. Welcome to NJPW Puro Rest Review. I am your your host, the very tired Andre C. Right over here, it's the United Empire Princess herself. It's Melba. How you doing, Melba? I'm doing great, Andre. I had a nice leg day this morning. Wasn't interrupted by anything. It was nice. I was also there really early because I had a really good sleep last night. I had to bed early. Partially not because I wanted to, but partially because I couldn't stay awake anymore. <laughs> and I got I 10 that. hours of sleep. Lucky. I got it like was five. nice. I got like five and a half. I got, I got in bed really early. It was really nice. And now I'm all done up today. I'm feeling pretty. How are you doing, my friend? Tired. Long day, work, you know, all that stuff. That work was fine. Nothing wrong with work. But, you know, just tired from not getting a lot of sleep and just trying to catch up on everything. I feel that. I feel that. I'm yeah. finally getting around to some of our stardom stuff. And I'm like, man, crazy cupcakes happening over there. Yeah, we might have to make some edits on how we do certain shows a week. There might we might just end up having to do like a weekly wrap up of for each show. I don't know because there's so much, especially starting in the next week. There's gonna be so much stuff starting on the tenth with uh, with Stardom's Five Stars starting. We might just have to like compress it all into one show and per week per per each like one new pit. We don't know. It, we'll it, it, figure it. You'll get content. We'll be talking about all the nights of the show. We just might not be doing it as extensively as we are at the moment because there's going to be so much to do. Yeah. Yeah. That being said, let's get into it because we got some great shows to talk about today, my friends. Yes. Before we do that, I want to thank each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining us here. We really do appreciate all of you uh, giving us support that you do. Uh, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell. Or hit, no, don't forget to share us out. Tell your friends, family, and just weird people. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Hello. Uh oh! <laughs> All those weird people, just like you and me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say la vie. Say la vie. Let's get into it. Let's talk some New Japan uh, nights number <laughs> five and six of the G One Climax. Uh, <laughs> let me get into my notes here, and we're kicking it off with Mel's pick. She picked Shinga Takagi versus Callum Newman. Um, this was this match was awesome. I thought these two just pour the place down. Um, Nakagi really using his power throughout with Newman having mm -hmm. to play. It was it felt like a junior versus a heavyweight in this because well, Newman isn't that big comparatively to Shingo Takagi. Like he's tall, a little bit taller, but he's mm -hmm. the mass of of mm -hmm. Takagi man, and it just kind of what it felt like. But it felt really good. It's like. And even like Newman trying to do a little Takagi in this, and then Takagi doing a little new. He did he, Takagi doing that like running back and forth, like like Newman does. I was like, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a beautiful spot where Newman uh, ends up drop kicking Takagi up the apron, then does the Kota Ibushi triangle uh, moonsault to the floor. He then sends him back in and hits the pit. Pip Cheerio uh, forearm off the top rope for two. I was like, ooh, it, even Walker called it the Pip Pip Cheerio. Or maybe it was mm -hmm. uh, Hanare. No, Hanare called it the Pip Pip Cheerio. I think it was yes. Hanare. Because yes. Osprey's his boy, right? So, yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, just there's a beautiful spot where the Os cutter gets stopped into a gory special. Oh, just the transitioning there was so good. Um, <laughs> Newman hits his huge running kick, but Takagi just pops right back up and hits a pumping bomber for two. Just so good. Uh, mm -hmm. tor tornado kick by Newman at one point, but Takagi ends up layering Newman out of the air when he goes for the Oscar. cutter. He's, like, he's flying through the air and then just bang, just right to the back of his head. I was like, oh, yes, that looks so good. Takagi was just on fire in this match. Um mm -hmm. And falls up with another lariat for two. Uh, they get into the end of this match. Last of the dragon gets reversed, but Takagi drops Newman with a shot, hits a, and then he hits a poison rana. Like Takagi, the Takagi poison rana. I was like, wow. 
Uh, Newman takes the pumping bomber. Takagi starts hitting strikes into the DDT, but Newman does that hands in the way plant and, and then to to kind of block and flip through it, and he hit and then pops up onto the rope, comes back. Oz Cutter for the win. And I did like after the matchup, Takagi's like kind of pissed. He's on the outside, and even Newman just gives him the bow, and Takagi just goes at like a just like a more like very angry bow, like. Uh, like, like it was a like ring. a fine then. Yeah, <laughs> he slapped the the ring apron as he did it too. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. and he gave mm-hmm. the the respect. But I I, uh, I like that. Yes, yes. This match is why I'm repping United Empire tonight. Can't really tell with this lighting, with the the makeup screen too. Ooh. Um, yeah, I went all out for this because this match was so fracking good i watched this i'm like how in the frick are you gonna follow up the rest of the show with this like this was main event worthy for me Mm. um and and given the rest of the show like the rest of the show is pretty solid also but i really felt that this could have been a fire main event Mm. um I felt that, like you mentioned, it was a really great battle of styles. Takaki being the more heavyweight and Callum wrestling more a junior style. Um, I felt that Shingo kind of went back to his junior roots in this. As you mentioned, with that Poison Rana, having to run the ropes with Callum, trying to keep up with him. It was like he was starting to kind of pull things out of his his past to try to keep up with the, the youth of Callum Newman. Um, yeah, the um, we love you know me, and I love that um, lariat punch combo that that Shingo always does. Sometimes he does the DDT, sometimes he follows with a lariat. Uh, the first combination he did the lariat, and he actually um, nailed Callum with it. The second time he went for the DDT, also hit that one, but Callum flipped right on through the ddt it was just as you mentioned the transitions in this so good um the height and the tightness like just how straight up and down callum newman can do that moonsault from the the turnbuckle is unfreaking real takagi was so close to that corner and he had no problem he just it landed right on top of him there wasn't any movement that takagi had to do to make sure that it got landed upon like you can see sometimes here it it was so perfect um there was okay what was this the oz cutter into the oh okay there is the wheelbarrow attempt or sorry oz cutter attempt that newman did where i think that was the gory special I just didn't know what it was called. Um, I wrote down a really weird description for it. Do you want it? I wrote down reverse wheelbarrow face buster thingy. Yeah, it's a gory special. Get caught up on his back and then let him go out. Yeah, dropped him. Didn't know that's what that was called. Named after the legendary Gory Guerrero. I've been telling you to do this educational content. Sir, help him elbow out. Hey, according to better. according I'm to some better. people, I don't know moves. According to some people. Yeah, and according to some people, the moves that I have, like the names that I have are stupid. Oh, let's talk about that person. <laughs> um, let me see here. The the sliding lariat. Yeah, there was a, a couple sliding lariats by Shingo um in particular in this match that were just so good. They were like he was hitting them like pumping bombers. It's crazy. Um, oh, uh, there was a pumping <laughs> I know, my, I was trying to understand what I was meaning in this note because it said there was a pumping bomber attempt by Shingo that was met with Callum's foot that mm. fed into another pumping bomber that was uh, an inside out so that, that mm. Callum took that inside out uh, pumping bomber it was so good I it's a great block spot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But then the the actual, like, I really appreciate people who can do that inside out spot good. Mm. 
there's some people who don't do it very well and they just end up landing like a sack of shit. This looked so good just because the speed and movement in which it was done, it just landed so perfectly. Um, the comeback by Callum, where he dropped Shingo with the jumping knee strike, was so good because the height that he gets on that knee strike, he's so tall as it is, but those legs are so freaking long. He just gets so much height. It was almost like he like up kneed Chingo in the face mm -hmm. and went to infinity and beyond above his head. It was great. Um, there's the Spanish fly that uh, Callum always has. Very, very good. It looks so good. Um, when Callum kicked out of that one pumping bomber close to the end there, I actually popped. I was like, ah! Because at this point, as much as I love Shingo, and Shingo is one of my top three wrestlers of New Japan, I was fully invested in 110,000% behind Callum in this one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is where the uh, the Lariat DDT or Lariat Punch DDT combo came, where, where Callum popped right through there, which fed into the win for him. Holy fracking crab. Oh, I was so happy with this match. And like I said at the beginning of my little rant here, I don't I didn't know how the rest of the show could follow up on this. I felt like this should have been the main. Yeah, I agree. I would very much agree with you. <laughs> we move on to the second match, in which which are the very solid match. I thought these two gelled well together. Sonata versus Gabe Kid. The end of this match comes. Um Sonata dodges a rebound lariat, uh, gets Kid up from and hits Magistry, misses a Shining Wizard. Kid hits a sh uh, hits shots, hits a lariat. Uh, Sonata flips through a German attempt, hits the Shining Wizard, goes for Deadfall, but Kid reverses it into the pile driver for two. Sonata comes back with the Rana, hits a backflip out of the out of the corner into the skull end, which looked like AJ Styles style in DDT when he used to do the backflip into the DDT. I love that move. Uh, mm -hmm. Skull end. They end up reversing each other a bunch of times, and somebody gets a reversal into Deadfall for the win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, no shame for this one with Gabe Kid. I mean, the strong champion is not lessened by this. This is the former IWGP World Champion. Um, has had some, some, some shocking losses in this uh, G1 Climax, but I was also very happy with this match. Gabe Kid has really brought the intensity in this G1. And what I loved about it is that we had been seeing a little bit more personality coming out of Sonata based on who he's wrestling. I feel like we still saw some of that personality coming out of Sonata with Gabe Kidd, and I love it. It's it's no longer G1 Yoshihashi, it's g ones Sonata. Yep. I almost couldn't get it out there. Sonata. Sonata. You know what that reminded me of? Remember Ace Ventura 2? When nature calls. I haven't watched that since it came out. <laughs> oh no, movie night. I rewatched Pet Detective. I love that movie. The second one was good. Oh. I'm not I'm nothing against it. It just wasn't was to me just didn't hit the same way. I don't know what it was. Oh, I love that second one. We're gonna have to have a movie night. We have a lot of movies we gotta watch. We do, we do. We've we slowly checked some off the list. We've got Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs one and two. And Emperor's New Groove. And Emperor's New Groove and part of Zootopia. I, but I already seen that. I, already I seen hadn't. That. Yeah, you hadn't. It's a great movie. We just, just so late when we started it. So we were also very intoxicated. Uh, That's let's move also on. true. We move on to show to Umino versus Great Ocon. I thought this was good. It's not the definitely not the worst match on the show. Uh, that comes in the main event. Um, but it was good. I I just don't think they ever felt. I I don't think they felt that chemistry in this match as as well as as others. Like mm -hmm. I, I thought they did well. Nothing wrong with this match. It was a good match. It's just I don't know. I never really felt myself invested in this one. A uh, good match. Um, Con <laughs> in this match, Con hits a sleeper suplex, uh, but Umino or uh, goes for a sleeper suplex, but Umino reverses with a backslide. Uh, gets him into the cradle DDT. Beautiful cradle look. Cradle DDT only gets two, so he stands up. And hits a blaze blade and the Death Rider for the win. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I, I kind of felt the same way. Like I really enjoyed this match. Very like in ring sound match. It just wasn't something that that I 
something was missing and I kind of felt it was not either one in particular. Well, uh, the one thing I did want to mention that I appreciated in this match was there was one point where uh, Ocon did fire up and I was like, oh my God, did he just? And Walker confirmed on commentary that he did in fact shout out his former partner, Kitomira. RIP, I miss seeing him. Mm -hmm. He was he was a really great big guy wrestler. And it made me happy to see that Great O'Connor was still thinking about his former partner in this. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I thought great match. And I loved Hanari's commentary throughout too. Mm -hmm. Again, he's mm -hmm. talking to a man who's one of his tag team partners, one of his stable mates. And I love mm -hmm. and then walk them at the end when he goes for blaze blade and they're both and like walker's talking about it like oh no and hanari's just like no don't do it <laughs> like it was just I, I i love the dynamic there yeah yeah hanari and and uh stewart did very very well on commentary i was very impressed yeah i, I really like hanari as part of the team well i did so not not think that this was was gonna be your pick though it was so good and it's it, and not just like i'm a zach saber zach saber jr versus jake lee I, i'm a saber jr fan for never mm -hmm this um but dude lee in that like the rolling in the beginning he just rolled with saber uh, he even mm -hmm. got up and then sat down to keep and, and got into the grapple again with saber like he was like, that was great man mm -hmm. um, i didn't know that lee had like i knew he had some technical background it just doesn't always show it mm -hmm. but man when you're going against someone like zach saber jr yeah and you gotta pull out all the stops and boy, howdy, did he! Oh yeah, um, the Saber pulling the armbar over the rope, Suzuki style. Loved it. Yes. I loved it. Um, uh, just, just a, a awesome match. Lee's choking Saber in the. He's got the rear naked choke on. He's working the body over throughout the match, like he's been just mm -hmm. taking shot, like the running knees to the midsection. Uh, the, the, as it's called, the giant killing knee, or the giant killing uh, is that running knee to the like midsection that he has. Uh, oh, okay. That's what uh, Walker called it. Uh, he gets a body scissors. He's elbowing him in the neck, uh, but Saber ends up rolling him into the ropes. Um, just, just really good technical throughout. It's hard to explain in it because it's a lot of technical. Uh, like Lee getting hits a shot, but Saber reverses the backdrop into a this octopus, but Lee ends up like just hip tossing Saber through. Uh, but then Saber gets him down, like trips him down and gets stands up and hits a sweet PK and just really good back and forth. Uh, like again, Lee with that knee to the midsection over and over in this match, um, just repeatedly with there, uh, choking him. He get, it just hits that, uh, giant, another knee falls it up with the guillotine choke, but Saber just like, you can see him fading and, he, and he's like flailing and he flails and gets the foot on the ropes. Um, yeah, Saber getting a, a corner European uppercut, but and then hits palm strikes and a haluva kick. Uh, Lee hits a shot, it's a like fires back, hits a back and gets a backdrop suplex. Uh, he, Lee goes for the choke slam, but Saber stops it with kicks, then reverses and in, uh, into another triangle. But Lee ends up getting uh, out and gets in getting into the cho uh, choke slam, but Saber into the arm bar and then into the double arm bar into the rings of Saturn. For the win. This was so good. Again, mm -hmm. a very surprising match for me. Because, like, I, again, I know that Lee has some submission background. I didn't realize he was this technical when he wanted to be. And he was working, again, the smart bastard, appropriately named, working very, very smart to try to counter Zack Sabre Jr. as much as he could. I was very impressed. Um with with how he kind of progressed through this match i honestly expected saber jr to work him over pretty quickly but mm. he almost had to struggle a little bit and this turned into a very poetic style match um i'm curious to see these guys meet again though because oh, like God, yes. they were so comparable in height and stature that it made this kind of like almost like a ooh, who's gonna pick up the win here and now that jake lee's kind of had a taste of what it is that zach saber jr does this gives him an opportunity to maybe 
you know, study him a little bit more, pick up a little bit more in his arsenal. He's got a good faction of people to work with in Gato, in David Finley. Gabe Kidd could probably teach. I mean, he's British too. He could probably teach him some stuff that, you know, Zack Sabre Jr. would know as well, you know. I would love to see these two meet again and maybe in a... At some point in time, I would I would like to see Zack Sabre Jr. get that TV title back. I, I would love to Sabre see them fight the world him. title. <laughs> hey, you know what? Whatever title, give it to him and then give Jake Lee a title opportunity. Because I feel like those two could have a very good build up to that as well. A hundred percent. So from the highs of the highs to the lowest of the lows, this oh, this, match, this match was not good. I'm sorry. I I'm. I'm really losing steam on Naito. He hasn't had a good performance all tournament. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if he's doing this intentionally, like playing it up, like he's like he's old and he's. You okay? Yeah, my headphones are just tangled up. Uh, but like, I don't know if he's if it, if he's playing it up or if it's, he's lost something because again, it it's just this Maybe is just the play. Yeah, and this is the weakest match because again, him and. Evil have had great matches in the past, and this mm -hmm. was just terrible. And then Kanemaru getting involved on this and taking out Bushi at commentary, and just so much bull crap in this, and then just beating the piss out of Naito. Sure, um, yeah, Bushi then making the save at one point, hitting uh, Kanemaru, uh, and then taking out Dick with the corner pad on the floor with just beating them both up. Um, the end of the match comes. Evil sent into the exposed corner. And Naito gets the insecurity and the Tornado DDT for two. The ref gets knocked down, but the little dick comes in, but he ends up throwing the, the powder in Evil's face by accident. And then Ken, Kenamaru comes in to do the Santori surprise to Naito, but he acts it, but he he accidentally hits Dick Togo. And Bushi ends up hitting the miss to Kanemaru, sending into the floor and hitting that rocket like tote face to Naito. Naito. And then Naito, they're thinking, oh crap, Naito's getting this. Hits, he runs. Running Destino for two. But you're like, okay. So he starts setting up for Destino. He goes for it, but evil reverses into everything is evil for the win. So, yeah. Evil is still in. Yeah. It was a very underwhelming win. Like, they really did set it up like, oh, oh, LIJ is, is, you know, firing up, taking back control of the match. Hit a Destino. That should have been the end of it. It's odd the way they had it go mm -hmm. um and yeah i i echo echo the sentiment i wouldn't say he hasn't had like not a good match this tournament but i would say that this meeting of naito and evil would certainly not be one of their better ones which is disappointing because i had a lot of hope for this one because i we've said it before i'll say it again each individual member of House of Torture is good. They're so damn good. But for some reason, together as a conglomerate, if you put two or more of them together, they they suck donkey balls. They're so bad. And it brings down their quality of entertainment, which is disappointing. You okay over there? No, you said conglomerate, and that made me laugh. <laughs> No, it, is, it's, that, it, is that a word? Did I use it in the wrong context? No, no, you did it right. It's just, it, it, it's Mark Briscoe on AEW has been just uh, going insane with his new group, the Conglomeration. Yes. <laughs> it's like him, Kyle O'Reilly, and, and Orange Cassidy. They're known as the Conglomeration. It, it makes no sense, but it's awesome. So every time I hear the word conglomerate now, I laugh. <laughs> Well, I didn't know that. That was AEW, you said? Yeah, on AEW, oh, ROH, all so that mix. Yeah, it's the conglomeration. Ooh. That's different. It is. Hey, you know what? I mean, for whatever reason, everything Orange Cassidy touched turns to gold. So, you know, go ahead with your bad selves. I used to hate that guy, and I think he's phenomenal now. So I still hate him. Yeah, but you're weird. Uh but the good kind, the good kind of weird. Uh, we we again, quick point update. So on top four and O oh is Evil and Zack Saber Jr. Uh, then you got Shingo Takagi, Gabe Kid, Callum Newman, Sonata, and Shota Umino all two and two. 
with four points. Uh, you have Jake Lee and Tetsuya Naito, uh, both one and three with two points. And then you have the Great Okan alone in last place, 0 and 4, zero points. Which is, I, I really hope that they kind of pull a bit of a Cinderella with him. Because mm. that feels very insulting, given how good he is and how hard he works. Like, for everybody that he's lost to, I, I haven't had a problem with it yet. Because, again, he's lost mm. to people. He's either lost to Shota Umino, who's on his come up in the company, uh, was it Gabe Kid? He lost a kid who, again, on his come up in the company, um, Newman or not Newman, uh, Saber. Not surprised again. This guy's kind of they're doing a certain kind of run with him right now, and and even the loss uh, to Shingo Takagi again, a guy who is a top tier and guy too. So like it, it doesn't surprise me. But again, it's later in the tournament where I need to see him beat certain people later on, like. I like to see him get the win over Sonata to get, just to give him a little credibility. Mm -hmm. Like I like to see that. I don't know how the title, evil definitely needs to lose to him. That's for sure. For the love of all things, holy evil. Gato. That's it. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. So we move on. And I'm, I'm actually very interested in seeing what him and Cal Newman do. That's going to be an interesting matchup watching those two go, watching the teammates battle it out. Hanari and Cobb are going to do it too. Hanari it's and Cobb true, too. It's true. So, yeah. It's true. It's true. So we get into day number six. We get to Melball's pick right off the hop again. It's El Fantasma yeah. versus Bolt. Then Oleg ELP. I even wrote this because he said it in commentary. Email P using his 19 year experience gap to out wrestle Bolton early. They said night they have a 19 year gap in how long, like comparatively, from when Bolton debuted to ELP's debut. 19 years of experience different here. Sweat it, yeah. And they're yeah. and they're only seven seven years apart in age. And they mm -hmm. have a 19 year gap. That's where maybe actually I don't think it's only six. Is he's or he's turning 38 this year? Uh, but I think Bolton turned 31 this year. So turned 31 this year. So yeah, seven year gap. Like it's but 19 year gap experience. That's the same. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. You wouldn't know it from this match. No. Uh, again, like Bolton mm -hmm. oh, using the power throughout. Like it's it's mm -hmm. it's Bolton overpowering. That's what he's is new done for but elp using his speed uh the high flying ability he ends like doing smart sending bolton to the floor hitting those tope hitting a tope suicida um mm -hmm. he goes to the top but decides against like jato even like stops him from doing a dive off the top to the floor which i'm like that might have been a good choice <laughs> given the knee issues that he has been having i would say yes so he just jumps down to the floor, hits sudden death, sends Bolton in, hits a springboard swanton into the lion salt for, but he only gets two. Um, mm -hmm. ELP with kicks gets him up into a burning hammer. I was like, it, 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 he didn't, it wasn't quite a UFO because he got him in the position for UFO where he ends up spitting and letting somebody go, which mm -hmm. is a dynified flying opponent because he's turned that move into now the burning hammer. Mm -hmm. And goes to the top. Thunder kiss 86 off the top. But Bolton kicks out at 2.9. Um, just Bolton gets the, it gets him up for a, a kamikaze, but ELP fights it off. So Bolton ends up hitting an F5 million, uh, sending ELP over the top rope to the floor on the F5 million. Just, and he just comes crashing down. I'm like, what? Uh, so he gets mm -hmm. back in, gets two flying body sausages for two. Uh, the Kamikaze is avoided again into our tender DDT, uh, but that gets blocked. But ELP ends up getting a small package and then a schoolboy, both for two. Uh, Bolton comes back with that, just shotgun dropping it is, and he picks him up. Kamikaze for the win. This match was so fun. So mm -hmm. fun. Because we saw this interesting clash of styles, as you mentioned, the size and power of Bolton Oleg versus that speed and like kind of aerial technicality that ELP has. The obviously problem, as you mentioned, Jado did stop him from doing the, the dive off the turnbuckle, which again, I also think was very, very smart. 
Um, the purple narkel that um, ELP hit on Bull Noleg, we got to shout out. We got to shout out the fun shenanigans. Because oh, it so wouldn't good. be an ELP match without a purple Nurgle, Dermis Destroyer. And, and he's been kind of going away, I think, from the Dermis Destroyer. He doesn't bring that one out too, too much anymore. But the purple well, I, is still it, fun. Well, it was very much a tag team move for him, too, when he would do it with Ishimori when they were the world's mm -hmm. cutest tag team. And when he, and when, and he would do it with Hikuleo a bit, but Hikuleo would hold the guy. A lot of the times, mm -hmm. the, the mo uh, most times I've seen it more than anything is when he's in, in a tag team and somebody's holding the person while he does it. Yeah, yeah. So, But we have seen him do it once in a while. Oh, yeah. If he's like on the top turnbuckle, he'll pull up someone's shirt and just sort of rake in the back or something like that. But yeah, he has kind of steered away from it. It is more of a heel hmm. move. We are seeing him be more of the, of the the sad man face right now. I am hoping by the end of the tournament, he he gains some of his smile back in there and turns on the jacket again. And we start seeing the flashy, flashy, the happy ELP, um, the the gut wrenching um, yeety 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 thing by Bolt and Oleg. It's always so super impressive that he can do that. But like, there's some people who do it a lot easier, go up a lot easier for it. Uh, ELP went up like a dream for it. It was so good. Um, the Toki Suicida by ELP that sent Bolton ass over tea kettle over the uh, barricade there was so good. So good. So good. And he just woo, like just right over there. No problem. It was so good. And, it was, guys, and that was right near the English guys, I'm pretty sure. It happened right near them. Yeah, I think it was in between the Japanese and, and English guys. Yeah, but it, they said, it, oh my God, that happened right beside us. Yeah, because you could see Walker, I think, in the background. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was really fun. The Lion Salt from ELP, always very, very impressive. Um, the strength of Bolton is just so heckin' impressive. There's one point he went for a suplex, and um, he just muscled him right up. I absolutely mm. loved it. Just so, so impressive. Um, there was also one point, last thing I want to mention, um, while setting up the end here, um, Bolton did a, a splash to um, ELP while he was laying down on the mat. Mm -hmm. I like that. Weakens the, the the back a little bit, gets him set up for that easy kind of transition into the kamikaze. Tremendous match. I absolutely love this. But then the storytelling that we're seeing happening with ELP has just been so tremendous and was the second best part of this match mm -hmm. because we we're seeing this evolution simultaneously happening we saw two stories happening in this match and you know me and my stories i love them so good oh you're starting to sound like my mother <laughs> and her stories uh, i'm getting up there man i like my stories gosh dear you're you're so young <laughs> I feel it anyway. All right. We, I look we're going to move on to my pick of the show of, of hey. the day six. Didn't expect that, did you? Even though we've been I picking you, we've been picking you, Murr a lot. Like, he's, I don't know what the, this dude's got some shine on in this tournament. Like, it just, I don't know what it is. But we're getting G1 Yuri Murr, and I'm liking it. I'm liking this Yuri Murr. Yeah, yeah. The last couple matches, like the, the beginning of the tournament was a little iffy. First couple of nights were a little iffy, but he's been on fire last little bit. Mm -hmm. Cool. Take us into it. So, yeah, um, I love Walker. He's talking about Yuri Mirror being all about the fundamentals and having to evolve, mm -hmm. but having mm -hmm. so much success so far in this G1 with the mm -hmm. fun. So do, does he need to evolve is the question he was posing. Again, he was alone on commentary for this show. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I want, I want to hear Zack Sabre Jr. call one of these shows. I really do. So badly. I feel like that might be a censorship issue. <laughs> so you just awesome. put a one out there. He'd be calling everyone dickheads. Yeah, he'd but be, it's, it's the, inter it's the internet. He'd be giving to the retired wrestlers fund quite a bit. It's the internet, so it Same doesn't matter. Same with kid. Same with well, I, kid. 
I guess they're not. I, I would love to hear kid on commentary. Oh my God. You may as well just have a little coin box there for him to contribute. Yeah, Cobb going surfing on the back of Yuri Murth in the match. Uh, Yuri so Murth sending, sending Cobb to the floor. Goes for the plancha, but uh, Cobb catches him. But because he, he's going to throw him into the post, Cobb, uh, Yuri Murth slips down and runs Cobb into the post. Um, just just some good throughout. Uh, Cobb catching the roll, the, uh, catches him at one point, rolls through the crossbody uh, and picks him up into this beautiful slam, but misses the moon, the standing moon salt. And uh, mm. but it, it just... I, sort I, I, of. I, he kind of caught the, like, legs mm -hmm. on that, but it wasn't enough that it would be damaging. Well, you and Mira was moving out of the way, though, at the same yeah. time, right? So, yeah. They had, like, they played footsies. It was foot-to-foot -foot contact. Yeah. Again, I, I love the way they did it, though. It, it looked really yeah, good yeah. in that sense. Um, mm -hmm. Beautiful high cross off the top. Later in the match, high cross off the top by Yumir. That guy's got a beautiful high cross off the top. Um, yes. Really liking that frog splash. I think he's picking up some things from a certain uh, El, El Presidente, stealing, stealing from him. They're looking very familiar. But he ends up missing the frog splash, and Cobb picks Yumir up. Yuri Mura up into the rampage, and then he just comes falling down on him with that elbow to the jaw. Looks so good. He picks him up. At the end of this match, he picks him up, goes for F5000, but Yuri Mura lands on his feet. They're trading strikes. Uh, Yuri Mura ends up rolling through Tour of the Islands, gets a couple roll ups on Cobb. Cobb fights back up, he starts hitting shots, hits an F5000, and then hits Tor. Of the islands to break the undefeated streak of Yuya Yui Mura. Mm. Mm -hmm. And like as great as this match is, I'm happy that that it ended that way because the last thing I would want is Yuya right now trying to challenge for that TV title. I think he has. There's other plans for Yui Mura in this. Mm. Um. So yeah, I I'm. Happy how this one kind of went. There, I only have a few notes on this one. There was the arm drag and drop kick attempts that Yomara was doing at the beginning of it, which was hilarious. And I love the way they played it because he was just, it was just like hitting a brick wall. And trying to do the arm drag on, on Cobb, it was just, yeet, just, just a full stop, stop and reversal of, of that. It was so. It was funny. I liked it. It was it was a nice comedic difference in in size and power. Um, there was one point where it looked like Cobb tried to lift Yurmura over his head, and it didn't look like he could quite make it. So then he just started feeding him those knee strikes to the ribs, which I know is a regular move of Cobb's. Love it, especially in this. He was getting Yurmura so high and driving him down so hard into those knees. So good. I loved it. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention was that the crossbody attempt being caught by Cobb was so cool because, like, just the power that Jeff Cobb has. It's so, it's not fair, Kevin Kelly. It's not fair. Yeah. Good pick. Good pick. So we move on to the match I was expecting Melball to take. It was Kenna Sakata Keshta versus an RD. These, these two just beat the piss out of each other and it was great. Uh, the end of this match comes, they're trading shots, and Nara hits a headbutt, but Takeshita comes back and drops him with the elbow. He hits the running knee to the face uh, in the middle of the ring uh, and the power drive knee. Uh, but Hanari comes back with a leaping headbutt for two. He goes for Streets of Rage, but hit, but uh, is hit with a or, but is hit with a suplex. Then, it, and then, uh, Kurosuke reverses into his, actually, I think he reverses into the Streets of Rage of his own, follows it up with another suplex, then goes into the Raging Fire Falcon Arrow for the win. Absolutely incredible match with these two. Mm -hmm. Just incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was a close second for me because, yeah, this was a straight up strong style mm. match. It was so good. These guys were, and like, I don't know if you saw the undercard matches at all, Andre, but the night before, um, Hanari and Takeshka were actually tagged together. Um, together? Did they? 
together. Yes, they were actually against um, the young lion Shomakato and Katsuya Murashima. And it was an, a story that started there that ended up feeding into the animosity of this night, I felt. Because they worked together, but reluctantly, like hesitantly, there was a level of respect that was kind of being half like kind of started in that tag match and then kind of i felt evolved into the story that happened in here where they were just trying their damnedest to one up each other and hit each other as hard as possible um there was a ddt on the apron by takesh that was just so good um mm -hmm. there was a the the diving lariat by Takeshka, also so, so good. Um, Hanari kicking out of Takeshka's Blue Thunder Bomb. And he hits that Blue Thunder Bomb. You guys need to watch it. People bounce. They bounce at least a couple feet in the air. It is insane how hard he drives you down. That Hanari was able to kick out of that was absolutely mental. And the Brain Buster. The Brain Buster by Takeshka is like the most picture perfect brain buster i think i've seen in a hot minute mm. it's just so good yeah, yeah. <laughs> we move on to the match i hated most on this show um uh, david finley versus ren narita um i was expecting because ren narita while he has been cheating throughout this tournament has been having really good strong matches david yeah. finley the heel so i figured they'd be going into this and they'd be like going and doing that whole your bullet club, well, um, your bullet club adjacent. I Maybe mean, we'll be cool on this. No, they just, yeah, they beat the piss out of each other early on. But mm -hmm. Narita got his first taste in this tournament of outside help, and Kanemaru showed up. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, I didn't. It just, it took it away from me when once uh, Kanemaru showed up in this. The match was good. Mm -hmm. Don't me wrong. I just I hated this the the way they did it because it just took yeah. me out of the match so much. And I'm like, ah, what did we do to deserve this? Yeah, it's like he gets whipped. Like the Rita gets him whipped into the exposed corner. And again, it felt the match also felt kind of odd with both men being such insane heels that it it, it, it especially yeah. what. And that's where I think I had the problem with Kanemaru most. He didn't do a lot in this match. But it's when, because he was he was healing on a super heel in David Finley. Mm -hmm. And I just, it just, it, it threw me off. Narita, uh, the heel master of, against super heel. Yeah. Uh, Narita distracts Rev. Kane gets the Santori surprise. Kanemaru gets the Santori surprise. I was rated as Kane just for abbreviation's sake. Uh, Finley ends up fighting off Kanemaru. Gets this in Lele. I get kicked in the balls. Uh, Narita gets the push up bar, but Finley ends up fighting it off because he still has a shillelagh. It's like knocking the push up bar away. He ends up getting him with a buckle bomb, then another, then the release power bomb for the win. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the ending, even there, kind of screwed me up because I'm like, this all should have led to a Narita win here with everything that happened in here towards the end. And Finley still pulled the win out. I'm impressed and I like it. Don't get me wrong. It just felt odd to me. The ending felt odd, but I, I definitely felt the right person kind of won in that. We can't have Finley losing too much more in this tournament to to kind of solidify, I would say, his, his status as global mm. champion. Um, that being said, yeah, I have to agree. The shenanigans did kind of take me out of it um, because it's like as as much character work as finley was trying to do and he was get he was very vocal throughout this match we always see him very vocal this this evolution of him is quite loud and i love it because those are the wrestlers that refuse to go quietly into the night they're going to give you the best kinds of matches they did their damnedest but like yeah something about this was just missing a mark with me as well and i do feel it kind of came from some of the shenanigans because gato also getting involved in yeah. there and that, like so yeah. much shit. Yeah, that's what I think what bothered me most is that both guys were trying 
Finley wasn't trying to cheat as much as Rita, but he was trying to do underhanded tactics. Uh, Gator was getting involved at points. And that's where mm-hmm. I think it really threw me off that both people were doing exactly the same thing. And it, in reality, if both men are cheating, it should be funny. It shouldn't end up being pretty goddamn yeah. hilarious. And this just was like, okay, this was good, but it wasn't great. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And like I said, it's a match I dislike most, and I still think it was a good match. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. agree. It was still a very good match. It was just the shenanigans were a little bit. So we're on the main event of the evening. It is Hiroki Goto versus Yota Suji. The past versus the future. Uh, mm. The end of this match comes. Goto ends up sidestepping the Gene Blaster into a roll up. But Suji, uh, uh, and then, uh, but Suji comes back and hits a super kick. Uh, Goto slips a suplex attempt and hits a GTW, but can only get two. Uh, Goto, Go- Goto hits a chest kick. He hits an inside out lariat. And hits a soup that where he lifts them up and then swings them down into a side effect almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gets that for two. Uh, Goto goes for GTR. Uh, Suji's trying to fight it off. He grabs Suji's wrist, pulls it in behind, and GTR. One, two, three. And I went, what the hell just happened? Yeah. I, in my heart broke a little bit. Mm, yeah. Because I'm like, <laughs> Because I picked Yoda Suji to, to steamroll this tournament, and he's just losing, 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 losing. I picked he's this man. Hiding. I said it in our preview show. I picked him to go undefeated in the block. I told, I said he's going to go nine and zero, but then lose in the finals to the Saber. And now this is what two, three losses in a row now. Three losses. He's, he's one in three. This has to be a Cinderella story. You can't have the cup winner of this year come in and do so poorly. Well, he's a cup um, winner. He was a cup winner in last year. You can't have a cup winner do so poorly. Or did he win the cup <laughs> this year? He did win it this year because he wanted to win both the G1 and the cup this year. But didn't he win it? Oh, no, because he came back and faced Sonata. And then he won yeah. the cup to face Naito and lost to Naito. That's okay. Right. I'm sorry. I have my right. ears messed up and how, how it was. I was going to say, what, I mean, I, my, my ADHD just fucks with my head. I don't know if I'm right or wrong anyway. So at least I was right there. Um, yeah, it, it feels we, we can't have the, the cup winner of this year doing so poorly in the tournament. So is he going to be our Cinderella story? I sure hope so. Because, mm-hmm. oof. Although, the, oh, I will say, the, the flow of this match definitely felt like we were looking at mirrored versions of each other. It was like Goto was wrestling a younger version of himself, and Suji was wrestling an older version of himself, with just some mm-hmm. slight differences in caricature. And what NJBW really does like to do is, with its veterans, when they're doing well they'll put them against these young guys and that they will pick up these wins over the new guys being like they're not done yet they're still ready and willing to go so i do appreciate that kind of message within this win for hiroki goto but as someone who chose yoda suji to win this tournament damn it (laughs) Mm -hmm. the the big the big thing for this block it is still super close both yes. blocks are super close. It's just you have two outright front runners in A block in mm-hmm. Saber and Evil. I know I heard mm-hmm. about what happened on the seventh. Uh, so I know kind of what's going on there with the points. But mm-hmm. I haven't watched it yet, but I heard it on another podcast. Um okay. but this I feel like this block is a lot closer from last to first than mm-hmm. what A block is. Because remember, you've got two people with eight points and you got a guy with zero. So, mm-hmm. like, you feel like the gap is so big that you don't see that. Where these guys, there's only four points separating the top from the bottom in this in this block, right? So mm-hmm. that's our big point. So we'll go over that. Uh, so you have Yuyumura and Konosuke Takeshi, each with uh, three and one with six points. And then you have Hanare, Ren Narita, Jeff Cobb, Bolton Oleg, Hiroki Goto, and David Finley, all two and two with four points. And then in last, you have Yoda Suji and El Fantasma, both one and three with two points. But again, this block is still wide open. Like, it's, mm-hmm. it's crazy. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like if if Yomara doesn't win another match for the rest of the tournament, I mean he's he could be hooped or he could not be. You know, it really does. You're right. This block is very close. Hmm. Yeah, I I I just it, it's cool to me. It is. It's very cool. Well, especially yeah. as fans, it gives us something to be very excited about because, like, the less we can look at a tournament and be predicted, like, feel feel that it's predictable, the more we're going to enjoy it and the more fun we're going to have with it. Mm -hmm. And this tournament has been very, very fun and has started some new rivalries, started some new stories, and it's probably going to start some more and tell some more. Looking forward to it, man. This has been a great yeah. tournament. Uh, again, so far, uh, we're again. This show is as of this past Sunday on day mm -hmm. six. Again, I know the seventh and eighth shows happened on Monday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I, I have a little bit. Of, I got spoiled a little bit for the Sunday for the Monday show, but I don't know anything about the uh, the Wednesday show. But again, it just mm -hmm. uh, this is great. Like I think this tournament has been running so, so smoothly good. and so well. Mm -hmm. And I have again, I was disappointed with things but everything has been at least good nothing mm -hmm. has been like shitty mm -hmm, like, i agree even evil and nido which i i i felt was weak was still a halfway decent match mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's yeah. been a very strong tournament so far mm -hmm. even the things that have been less than stellar haven't ruined the entire night or tournament yet yet Yet. Yes. We we still got a few nights and we still got a lot of torture. It's very, very true. Mm -hmm. But with that, we have come to the end of another episode of NJPW Puro Res Review. Uh, you can find me on the X at that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads at that Canada dude. You can find me on the fa our Facebook page, Andre and Melba Wrestling Talk. You can also find me over in the comments section on uh, comment section on the BAM Weekly page, which we know. Stuff's coming soon. It's it's gearing up. It's gearing up, eh? You know. So I just I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, I'm looking forward to being part of the team going forward with with, with Bam Weekly. What we're gonna that's gonna evolve into. So lots coming there. So check get over there onto their Facebook no. page. Bam Weekly. It's gonna be there for a little bit longer as Bam Weekly, and they're just gonna the name and logo are gonna change. So, but the community mm -hmm. will stay the same. Yeah. Don't forget to check out our local establishment on Twitch and YouTube at twitch.tv slash our local establishment and youtube.com slash at our local establishment. Uh, last night, me and Ed did our uh, Marvel talk where we talked uh, the all the stuff coming out of Hall H. We talked the numbers for Deadpool already at over half a billion dollars in like six days or six. It was that didn't count Wednesday. So in six days, they did half a billion dollars. So this is just movies tracking to probably hit a billion for the first time in a while. Mm -hmm. That so for for Marvel. So yeah, I come go check that out. We talked about it. We talked all about the doomsday of it all, uh, and we talked all about the secret, the secrets of the wars, and all that other stuff. We got into it. We talked about it. We talked about those uh, wonderful, wonderful Russos making their return. So go check that out over at okay. YouTube.com/slash at our local establishment. I also got to give a big shout out to our boy Mike the Ref for simulcasting all of our stuff over at youtube.com slash at Backbreaker Video. If you're watching us there, thank you so very much. And check out our page, Andre Milbaras and Talk. Uh, you can find Mike live every week for his wrestling content on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Paper Sundays. He does the AEW Watch Alongs. And don't forget the rest of the week, he's playing video games there on Twitch. He was, I know he was in there this afternoon playing games. Uh, so go check him out, twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref. And you want replays of his gaming content, go to youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming, where you can find content from him, Mr. PJC, this little dude right here, Rick Jules, and their frequent guest, Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J here. That's a weird heart. There we go. Yay. We're not broken hearted like ELP. We're together. Mm -hmm. He's literally doing the broken heart thing. I he like is. It's, it's, it's so I, sad. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. Melball, where can they find you? If you're wanting to follow a Melball, you can follow her on the X thing at Collins Melball. You can follow her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mess It on Blue Sky, and at Melball Collins. 
You can also find me on our local establishments programming with this guy every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time for the Japanese Wrestling Update. And you're going to want to be around for that later because, man, oh, man, we got a lot of shit to talk about. Got two mm-hmm. weeks worth of stories that we need to chitty chat, chitty chit chat about. So make sure you show up for that and have some comments ready for us. If you're wanting to also catch me on Astro Pizarro's YouTube channel, you can catch us on Ladies Wrestling Showcase. We do have a show coming up. She did just get a promotion, though, so she's working out some stuff. But we will have an episode for you next week on all the great things happening in women's professional wrestling. We, yeah, I was going to say, we ain't no limp around here. We go all the way up. <laughs> oh. If you're wanting to watch NJPW, we will leave a link in the description box down below. It is NJPWworld.com. It is 1,400 yen? 1,200. 1,200 no, yen? 1,250 yen, and it ends up being like 1,450 Canadian. 1,450 Canadian. Or, or 10 Canadian. Because we're in Duluth. Oh, hi. Oh. No. The other one's Sad Mary. Novel. He's, he's only in a relationship. The other one's married, so. Jesus Christ. It's easier to break up a relationship than, it's, <laughs> than it is to break up a marriage. Come on. Jesus Christ. Okay. Shout out, Sean Spears, because we love you and your marriage and your two children. <laughs> and shout out, Eddie Tharp, if you're ever single. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> clipping that for sure. Uh, <laughs> Ah, go watch NJPWWorld.com, you guys. The, t- the world television matches are all free, so you can check out... Hi, Hi Sean Spears. You can check out all of Zack Sabre Jr.'s reign. You can check out how Jeff Cobb became the champion. Go check it out. I'll try <laughs> My trusted friend, Nicole, do you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Uh, all, all I can tell you is Melba is kind of crazy. I love you all. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Please shout out to all your friends, family, and just the people with the cutest little puppies. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time I drop a new video. Ding dong. Hello. Hello. Also send us pictures of the puppies. Uh, I, if you want to send me pictures of puppies, go go by the old king, the way King used to say puppies. Sure. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. I don't want to see dog pictures. Come on. What the puppies? Yeah, Rude. Puppies. That being said, I am your Mel Ball. Over there is the puppy hating Andre. I don't hate puppies. <laughs> I love your dog. He's awesome he is pretty awesome we will see you next time adios